Good afternoon, big girls. Today we'll be running through my top 25 wide receiver rankings for the 2024 fantasy football season. All right. And we did this already for the running backs last week. So if you missed that, we will link it down below or at the end of the show so you can watch this, then go bike and watch that. It's going to be a good old time. All right. So as we did in the running back ranking video, the way it's going to work is I got my 25 rankings and we will be comparing them to ECR, expert consensus rankings, which are where everybody in the industry uploads their rankings on Fantasy Pro. So we will go through the 25, but I will highlight and talk a little bit more in depth about the guys that I have either much higher or much lower than ECR, right? And those guys will always be time stamped as we done do the damn thing, all right? The other damn thing we got to done do is tuck our shirts in. These clean ass shirts are available right now on bdge.shop. We launched them like 48 hours ago. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how many more we got left for y'all. They were selling quick off the shelves. They're clean as shit. All right. Let's get it. So I thought it would just be fun to start off with my wide receiver one, which is Tyreek Hill. Okay. And CD Lamb is my two. According to ECR, they are flipped. Everybody has CeeDee Lamb as the one and Tyreek Hill as the two, all right? If he doesn't get hurt last year, if he doesn't miss a game, if things break a little bit right for Tyreek Hill, he's probably going for 2,000 yards uh, last year. And there was nothing about last year that said he was slowing down, okay? And, and when we look at, like, the, the receivers from last year, look at Tyreek Hill's snap counts relative to the other top receivers, okay? Like, week three, 53% of snaps. Week five and six, 46, 57. Weeks 11 through 14, 59, 63, 51, 47% of snaps. He played 63.3% of his fucking team snaps on the year, all right? And he still went for 1,700 yards. Is this construction ever going to be fucking done similar to Tyreek Hill career the man will never stop he will never stop being loud and fucking producing like a jackhammer okay and and that's that's the thing with me he played more than 20 percent fewer does that make sense he played 20 percent fewer snaps than cd lamb did it the, the dolphins were like routinely destroying teams in the beginning of the year and there were just times where he sat more because of it he now has back-to-back -back seasons of 170 or more targets and 1,700 yards and somehow actually improved based on last year's games. Like his per-game numbers went up. I do think that Dak and CD can respectively lead uh, the league in both passing and receiving yards together. Their running back approach points to the fact that they will be extremely pass-heavy this year. I just don't think there's a whole lot to yap about here. Like, you're you're not going to lose your league with either Tyree Kill, CeeDee Lamb. Just take one of those guys and be happy with it. I just want to talk about it because I'm, I guess, going against consensus here. I have Jamar Chase as my three. That is where ECR has him as well. I have Amon Ross St. Brown as my four. And Justin Jefferson as my five. ECR has those swaps. They have Jefferson at four, Amon Ra at five. Uh, me and ECR both have A.J. Brown at six. I have Puka at seven, Garrett Wilson at eight. Those two are flipped in ECR rankings. Now I have Marvin Harrison at nine, where ECR has him as wide receiver 11. It's not a huge gap, but when you are talking about a couple spots in the top 10, it does become a little bit more discerning and it does need a little bit more uh, yapping about it. All right. Enough yapping, more yapping. I'm all over the fucking place. Marvin Harrison Jr. In my opinion, he's as pro ready as they come in an offense where you have a real quarterback and you're pretty much completely void of any target earners outside of Trey McBride and, of course, Michael Wilson, the GOAT. But when we look at available targets and air yards going into the 2024 season, the Arizona Cardinals are sixth in terms of the most targets that are you know open in that offense because you have Hollywood Brown, you have Rondell Moore, you have Zach Ertz. Like you have all these guys who you know don't seem like huge target earners right now, but they leave and that eventually adds up to, again, the six most targets, 217 targets available in this offense. you got the Chargers, the Bills, the Commanders, the Bengals, the Jaguars, and then the Cardinals right there. I am fully expecting Marvin Harrison to have the, you know, Je Jefferson, Jamar Chase, OBJ type rookie season. I, I don't know how he'll do in the touchdown category, to be honest with you, but I, I could see him putting up 1,200, 1,250, 1,300 yards immediately as a rookie. Do I like him where he's going overall in drafts before guys like Jonathan Taylor? Probably not. But within the wide receiver rankings themselves, it's like wheels the fuck up. OK, so we got MHJ as number nine. I got Brandon Ayuk as 10, where ECR has him at nine. I have Devontae Adams at 11, 
DCR has him at 10. Uh, Chris Alave at 12. We're on par there. Drake London at 13. We got Mike Evans at 14. Those two are swapped. So right now we don't have any big differences. And this is where the first big one comes into play. I have Jalen Waddell as my wide receiver 15 in redraft this year. ECR has him four spots lower down at wide receiver 19. Waddle has now started his career with three straight thousand yard seasons. Uh, the list of players who has done that is small. That's that's a verified list. That is a valid list of wide receivers. OK, in 2021, his rookie year, he came in, caught over 100 balls. And it was a lot of like the short area, quick target around the line of scrimmage, nine yards per reception type shit. And it was like, OK, a lot of volume. I need to see the efficiency. I need to see that explosiveness that we saw back in Bama. All right. 2022, he said, fuck it. Let's ride. They bring Tyree Killen, and what does he do? He turns into one of the best deep threats, if not the single best deep threat in the NFL. Uh, he literally almost doubled his yards per reception. It went from 9.8 as a rookie to 18.1 as a sophomore, and he led nearly every receiving efficiency metric as a sophomore. This is a tweet from Jacob Gibbs. Career yards per target, 15-plus air yards, among wide receivers selected in round one of the NFL draft from 2016 to 2023. Uh, Jalen Waddell is atop that list, and it is not even fucking close. Like, he is not even close to those other guys. He is one of legitimately the best deep threats in the NFL. Obviously hard to really, like, break out, break out with Tyreek Hill, who is probably, like, the best of all time. Don't come for me, whatever. But look at Jalen Waddell's 2023 season, and he was hyped going in. I really liked him going into last year. Plagued with injuries. The dude literally dealt with a concussion, back soreness, knee soreness, bruised chest, a high ankle sprain. And with that, while he played three fewer games in 2023 than 2022, on a per-game basis, he actually saw a sizable chunk up in both targets and receptions per game. And yes, of course, Tyreek Hill, like I talked about already, he's the alpha in this offense, but we also saw them coexist to perfection in 2022 when Cheetah did go for over 1,700 yards. Waddle was also a 1,350-yard receiver with eight touchdowns. And this is a year, again, where they didn't add a real wide receiver three. OBJ is... Don't like literally don't say a fucking word about OBJ. They don't have a real tight end there either. So it's not like they feel like they can't give 55% of the targets on the team to Waddle and Tyree Kill. I once again, you know, if he's healthy, expect him to see, expect them together to see 50% plus of the team's targets. You're telling me like you can get a guy who I think will wrap up between 1,200 and 1,400 yards on the year in one of the most explosive offenses at wide receiver 1920. And the thing about Waddle is if he pops for 9, 10, or 11 touchdowns on the year, he can easily do what he did in 2022 and finish as a top eight or you know top six fantasy wide receiver. Love his ass. Pause. Continuing down the rankings, me and the rankings both have Michael Pittman at wide receiver 16. We have Nico Collins at wide receiver 17. DK Metcalf at wide receiver 18. Debo Samuel, I have down at wide receiver 19, where ECR has him at wide receiver 15. So we're talking about a four-spot difference. And I, I don't know, dude. I always just feel weird drafting. This is one of the ones you'll find, you know, in my videos, If you're, especially if you're new here, please subscribe. But this is what happens in my videos, right? If I make a list of like 10 players or make, make a list of five players, there's always like really sound logic behind the four out of the five or the nine out of the 10. And then there's always like one guy, maybe two if the list is longer, where they're just vibe picks. I don't have a lot of good reasoning for you. you don't have a lot of good logic for you. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I'm not drafting Debo as a wide receiver 14 or 15. Played well last year, obviously, but I still worry that since like C-Mac came over, that short area like around the, the line of scrimmage yardage, like easy dump off stuff doesn't go to Debo as frequently as it does now to C-Mac. And you have Brandon Ayuk, who is like truly legitimized himself as the alpha wide receiver and the real route runner in this offense. George Kittle's still doing his thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just overthinking this. I just need to let uh, need to let the pants unbutton a bit and, and just let Debo be deep Debo, but a little lower on Debo than consensus. So I got Debo at 19. I got DJ Moore at 20, which is three spots lower than consensus. I got Cup at 21, which is a spot higher. We got Stefan Diggs, a spot lower than consensus at 22. So I have Pickens at wide receiver 22. ECR is him down at wide receiver 29. I, I went deep on, on George Pickens in, on a Dynasty video last week on the on the Dynasty channel. So if you play and you're not familiar uh, or you didn't know that we had a Dynasty channel, go subscribe. The link is down below. Again, I just feel like we have George Pickens, who is a 23-year-old, right? He's two years into the NFL. He's not 25 like Nico Collins, right? He's 23 years old. Crazy athletic profile coming off of a second year, 1140 yard breakout after a rock solid 800 yard rookie season. Like he is climbing up that like normal trajectory of wide receivers who become great. 
eventually, right? And I compiled that list for you. The list of wide receivers since 2000 that had an 800 yard rookie season followed by an 1100 plus yard sophomore season. And then I broke it down by age, guys who are rookies at 21, 22, 23. So if you're listening via podcast, you know, we always put a lot of charts and stuff on uh, on video on YouTube. So I suggest you check it out over there. But the list, I'll kind of just skim through this really quickly. But 800 yards as a rookie, 1100 yards as a sophomore. Michael Thomas, A.J. Green, Marcus Colston, Jalen Waddell, T.Y. Hilton, Terry McLaurin, Devonta Smith, D.K. Metcalf, A.J. Brown, Chris Olave, Julio Jones, Andre Johnson, Deshaun Jackson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Amari Cooper, Mike Evans, C.D. Lamb, Juju, DeAndre Hopkins, George Pickens. There is like borderline no fucking misses there besides Juju probably. They finally have non-Kenny Pickett quarterbacks. Got rid of Deontay Johnson, who has averaged over nine targets a game over the last four years. I get it. Like everyone wants to label George Pickens boomer bust. The guy also had five games of 100 or more receiving yards last year, four of which went for 125, and he scored four touchdowns in those four games, okay? Like, when he goes boom, he goes boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room, George Pickens. I want you on my fantasy team, all right? And maybe Roman Wilson is the next man up. He's not. Maybe Arthur Smith will ruin this offense. Drake London had more targets in each of the last two seasons with Arthur Smith than George Pickens just had in his breakout season. He's going to vacuum up targets with Deontay Johnson gone. I just think you bring in Russ or even Justin Fields, who I don't, I don't really think is going to get on the field until maybe later in the season. Those guys lock onto their number one receivers. We saw it with DJ Moore. We saw it when it was Tyler Lockett. We saw it with DK Metcalf. Like, transparently, I wasn't in love with George Pickens coming out of school, but this value is just way too fucking good to pass up on. Like, if he goes, last year at 106 targets, if that jumps up to 125 and his touchdowns go from like five to eight, he will then be a 24-year-old receiver coming off of three incredibly strong seasons. And I think this is like a perfect storm of, of buying him right now at a wide receiver three price that will get you at worst wide receiver three value. And I think he'll end up being a top 18 fantasy wide receiver at the end of this year. So after George Pickens, we have Amari Cooper, who I probably need to move a little bit higher. Going through and talking through and looking at everything, now that I'm looking at everything, I think the three moves I would probably make I would flip Mike Evans over Drake London. So I'd put Mike Evans at wide receiver 13, Drake London at wide receiver 14. I would flip Nico Collins over Michael Pittman, I think. So I'd put Pittman at 17, Nico at 16. And then I think I would probably push Amari Cooper up to like wide receiver 20. Two. But there you have it. Those are my wide receiver rankings for the 2024 season. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the button. It looks like this. If you have not yet watched the running back version of this, also make sure you watch that. Link down below. Shirts linked down below. Everything linked down below. Goodbye.